it's France versus Germany, fourth versus fifth in the qualifying. And it's a surprise to see Germany ranked this far down the current world champions, but they have had a replacement in the team. And Zealand, not too far behind though, that we have come on and done 
so many things over the years as well. Point two of a second is the difference as the second rider now goes out of the track. Yep, Lauren Bell swings up and this is Sophie Capewell coming through for Great Britain. So they're, they're drawing away from New Zealand. New Zealand are point three eight one behind. One more lap to go, point six of a second. Great Britain will win this fourth heat. That was expected, but it's the time that's so important. They need to go fast to get into the race for the gold and silver medal. Hugging the bottom of the track as they come to the line, and 46.8. That should no. not do it, actually. That will be outside. They will not be racing for gold. So that is a bit of a surprise. 0.04 of a second. So wow. China will be going into the gold and silver final against Germany. And Great Britain has done enough to go into the bronze final against the Netherlands. Lamarink, Van der Waal, and Van der Beek, three riders from the Netherlands. Strapping themselves in. So these sprinters have so much power out of the start gate that they all use toe straps over the top as well. So cleats are quick in and then toe straps. in the men's team pursuit. Holly Glenn from Australia pulling his foot. We don't want to see that here in uh, such an important event as the team sprints. Final five seconds now. Race for the bronze medal, women's team sprint final. Oh, yeah. Stephanie from Lauren Bell out the start gates and Kira Lamaking on the other side of the track in the Netherlands. Oh, 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 oh. start. Slightly quicker, on the group, a second under the first half a lap, let's see we go up to 50 metres. And it's gone out a little bit further, so great start to Great Britain, faster of the two squads to get going. And they're holding it at 3, 0.33 of a second, so it's going to come down to this final lap. Can Steffi van der Peek bring it back? Well, it's brought, brought it back by 0.1 of a second, they're coming there. Come back a little bit, Emma Fanuka now, the Welsh rider running for Great Britain, trying to finish this one off, it's down to 0.23 now, very close between these two squads, Netherlands bringing it back a little bit, but not enough, Great Britain come away with the bronze medal, 46.6 seconds, and a really good finish from Emma Fanuka, make sure they come away with the bronze. Pretty even race after that first lap, wasn't it? The second, third laps, very consistent. Solid performance for the great Britain. Race for the gold medal now, Germany versus the People's Republic of China. Women's and team sprints, and it's the world champions that are the favourites. They had a bit of a stumble in the qualifying, a bit down, qualifying in the lower ranks, but then they bounce back in round one. Super fast time for the world champs. And they are now sitting in the home straight up against China in the back straight. Alessia Catriona Propster, who was in the qualifying for Germany. So she joined the world champions, uh, Grabosch and Emma Hinzer, and they, they did a pretty good time. They did enough to, to get fifth, so then they were up against the French, but then when they've swapped in their other world champion, Lee Sophie Friedrich, you can see the difference, and they had a 1.2 second change, so we'll see what happens here. China versus the world champions, Germany, and Paulina Grabosch getting the Germans up and going. Racing in the rainbow stripes, it has to lift you. They're fresh off the European Championships. They won there. So they have good form as a combination. They've had good form for the last couple of seasons, but it's China with a super quick start. Point two of a second faster than Germany. We saw that in the previous round as well. Germany with a bit of work to do now to bring this one home. Gone out to point three. Are we looking at an upset? Wow. Emma Hinzer, the world sprint champion from Years. She's brought it back a little bit. Very fast second lap from the Germans. Emma Hinzer brought them back into contention. Now it's Frederick down the back straight and they've gone in front. Half a lap to go and it is the world champions. They're going to fight themselves around to the line to just get the win. Oh, they're saying it's a dead heat. An absolute dead heat. It was Emma Hinzer that brought them back and this is the finish. Champions coming away with the gold medal here in the women's team sprint at the UCI 
ACI Nations Cup in Jakarta. What a great performance. With the rainbow bands on, it certainly does. Here we go, here's the First round now of the men's and team sprint. First heat from the Netherlands versus Germany. So the European champions are that crown a few weeks ago. Fourthly, we'll see the world champions Australia come against Poland. So as we saw with the women, three riders, three laps of the track, one lap each, and absolutely four gaps. This is a team we would expect to see in group such a quality team, the Netherlands, and they are absolutely flying. Roy Vandenberg gets them up and going that first lap, up and out of the way. 17.3 for the first lap, 0.2 of an advantage over Germany. Harry Levis can see you right now. Oh, we've got the Germans. <laughs> so we've got the Scottish Show versus the Lovers. They are swung up and we're into the final lap now. Max Dornback and Tim Van Loon pushing off for the Netherlands. And they've done a fantastic job with the Netherlands as expected. Really fast, 42.149. So that's a fantastic improvement. That's over a second faster than they did in the previous ride. So the Dutch had a bit of a bobble on that first round. And they're now here, or in the qualifying, I should say, down in the first round, really coming back just to start with an incredible power going. that uh, Alistair Fielding is showing that as well. They come around the end of the first lap. 17.1 went two of a second up. So Great Britain doing everything they need to, but the Japanese team are super fast in the back end. They certainly are. I think they Gee, that was, a, that was a little bit of a messy swing up, but they've done it. Uh, and we've got, I think it's Jack Carlin of Great Britain. Come free and the, the GBs coming through the final bend. They've got themselves in front with a half a lap to go, and they've come from behind to get the win. So when they give themselves a chance, to that the third fastest in times will race, no, third and fourth, sorry, will race for the bronze medal. So Japan, good job. They just need to get that first lap a bit faster, I think, Eddie, because she, the back end is incredibly quick. Wow, 42, a huge difference. That was a 0.4 of a second faster in that round. And Scott, I would say, if they are going slow in the first, first lap, but they come come through and win with a new incredible time, surely that that doesn't matter. Surely a what they're doing is working. Exactly. So it's, the team's sprint is about three riders. It's not about the first, although uh, a lot of people do like do like to, to look at oh, who's the fastest in the world, who's the fastest here, but this is a, a three lap event. And fastest two winners, always for gold and silver, third and fourth fastest, and racing for the bronze. Versus China. On paper, the French then should get the victory this way. They're going through, but there's been so many changes in speed from the previous rounds of this one that we've already seen tonight. Quick start from both teams, and it's the Chinese that go a little bit quicker. Point two of a second up on the more favoured French. So a lot of pressure now going on to that final lap of halal from the French to bring it home quickly. So Zhao this is here from France. So they've got uh, one and a half laps to go. We've got the Peoples Republic of China are uh, point one ahead, one to go, and Halal is now bringing it home from France. Half a lap to go now, and they are now back in front. So it's taken them two and a half laps to get back into the front now. But France will go through as the winners of this third heat. And teams are fine, like they're quite fine. A little bit messy, you can see the second rider there from France, Vigier. She was running down the track a little bit, just losing a bit of balance. What's that third lap? Caught it before the start. So now, with the bar, fast he came back in the qualifying round. Fairly significant time gap between these two teams in qualifying. Australia really are trying to get themselves in the race for gold. 
moment, the fastest time. That is from the Netherlands, 42.1. Time for the Australians to beat, 42.7, to guarantee themselves a spot in the race for gold. Super quick start from both of these teams. Lee Hoffman getting the Australians up and down. It'll be interesting to see just where he sits compared to the Japanese team in particular, who currently have the second fastest time. Australia up and in front for now. Yeah, there's not much in. Scott, 0.068, and you can already see the change, point oh, so 0.272 after one lap. Then we have uh, Matthew Richardson on the front now for Australia in the rainbow stripes. And he'll be swinging off up the track, and we have Tom, um, Thomas Cornish bring it home for Australia. So can they do it? 1.4 is the gap between them and Cole and Cornish. They're going to around the final corner, and they will certainly win this, but what is the time? 42.3. Second fastest overall time, so that guarantees them a spot in the final for uh, gold and silver. But it was a little bit slower than the time we saw from the Netherlands. So the Netherlands going through as the favourites now into the race for the gold and the silver medal. Australia doing enough to make sure that they will be in competition against the Netherlands. Yeah, very interesting. So they'll be happy to make it into that next round, but they're going to have to find something else. So they actually went a lot faster in that round. Netherlands are still 0.15 or so faster, so that's that's a, that's a big, a big, a big gap. But I'm sure they'll go sit down with all the coaches, they'll, they'll look at all the splits, they'll look at the gears, they'll look at ask the boys how they felt, and then ask make some changes. So I'm sure they'll be hungry to win their first race in their rainbow bands. Tom Cornish finished them off for Australia. Force the second fastest time but trip into the final. The champions pump the first mark. The question they bring home again several times throughout these rounds. This one really counts. This is for the gods medal France versus Japan. Nagasako on the left. Putting low on the right, both teams up and going as quickly as they possibly can. Maximum efforts will get the first indication of who's the fastest out of the start gates. They come through the first half lap, and it's a quick start from Japan this time. So they really are doing it just when they need to for the medals. Absolutely, Japan point was one point one five faster than France in the, in the round before, so they'll be looking to get a little bit more. It's not there's nothing in it. France coming back a little bit in this second lap. Now one lap to go and it goes to the side of the French. So the French are slightly up. Halal has been incredibly quick in the final lap. Each time he's been on the track. And can Obara hold him off though? The gap's opening up. France are going to take the bronze medal. Uh, what a performance. 0.3 of a second in the end. And it's that man once again finishing it off for them. Ran Halal with an incredibly in the middle position. And Jeffrey Hooglant in third. Five seconds to go. Final of the men's team sprint here at the Nations Track Cup in Jakarta. Australia versus the Netherlands, and they are cleanly underway thus far. Hoffman doing everything he can to get himself up and going. The Netherlands had the fastest first lap in the previous round, 17.29. Let's see how they go this time through. So Australia are 0.148 behind the Netherlands. The Netherlands have the advantage, but they're coming back. It's quite close now, 0.058. Slightly slower first lap that time for the Netherlands, but they are just in front, really close. But there has been an issue. There's a big issue for the Dutch team, though. We can see them swinging up, and their third rider had a big problem. So they've got to the line with a lap to go in the front. But the Australians that are continuing, the third rider for the Netherlands having a major issue, and that has gifted the win to Australia. So really unfortunate to see what happened there to the Netherlands. It was Jeffrey Goodland that had the problem as the third rider. What, what, did, what happened? I didn't see it. Well, that's the question, isn't it? I don't think he got on the wheel and realised that uh, it wasn't going to happen for them. So the Australians were behind. The Dutch super quick, perhaps a little bit too quick for Jeff Hoogland. So some controversy here at Jakarta. Let's see. This is the start. So it was all fine from the start. Neck and neck. The, the Dutchies got out faster. Then we see the Australians come back. Then it gets really close. Okay, so this is that was Lee Hoffman swinging up, Matt Richardson taking over the world champions from Australia versus the 